Hi everybody, I'm Will. I'm a local uh, music tutor and I am here to talk to you about music things. Um, I was sick last month, so I do apologize. I missed quite a bit of time. Um, this month I actually want to focus on the different things that I do in my career as a music tutor. Um, first thing I want to focus on is actually uh, my experience with people who have special needs. Um, I have a unique standpoint on this because I actually happen to be a father of a child with special needs. Um, when I say special needs, so you know what I'm talking about, I mean all special needs, not just autism. Um, I've dealt with people with ADD, I've dealt with people who have uh, Down syndrome, my daughter has something called microcephaly and polymicrogyria. Um, these are all people who have needs that are special, um, you know, needs that are different than everybody else needs. Um, the very first thing that I would say uh, is most important when you're teaching somebody with special needs is that you treat them like you treat everyone else. They don't want to feel like you're making exceptions for them, um, that you're going out of the way, or they don't really need you to remind them that they are different. They want to be treated the same as everyone. Um, so to do that, I actually stick to my rubric. So my rubric is um, I start lessons with some sort of warm up, depending on what instrument it is and who it is. Um, I have uh, a time for us to review what we did last week or last two weeks, whatever time period it is. Um, then we do our lesson for the day and then we go ahead and we do a review for the day. Um, that uh, setup really helps everybody across the board. Almost all of my students are always making progress um, and they always feel like they're being successful because it just allows them to you know, really work on what they've already known learn something new, ask questions, um, that's just, it, it works. Um, the next thing I would say is um, to work with people who have special needs, uh, you need to think outside the box. So thinking outside the box is simply teaching the same thing differently. Sometimes teaching the same thing several times in a row to make sure that um, it's understood. I apologize for all the ums. <laughs> um, so, one example of that is like let's say I'm teaching about note values. So we'll take the quarter note. Um, if I'm teaching somebody who is uh, more conceptual, I might not be able to say, hey, a quarter note is only one beat. I might actually have to say, hey, look, this is a quarter note. Quarter notes get one beat. Let's clap four quarter notes and actually have them do an activity to understand it. Um, another thing that encompasses trying to think outside the box is, um, you know, as I said, I've had students who have had ADD. Um, I can't sit there and talk to them about the same concept for very long. I need to make sure it's moving and make sure there's many different activities going on to keep them engaged. Um, it's not really a negative thing. It just makes it um, more interesting for me to make sure that I'm engaging them and that they're staying interested. So again, let's talk about rhythm. Let's say I'm teaching about quarter notes. I might be able to teach them about like what a quarter note is for maybe a minute or two, but I need to immediately have like, okay, let's tap quarter notes. Okay, let's stand up. Can you uh, show me quarter notes by lifting your hands? One, two, three, four, you know, um, getting them fully engaged to keep them interested in what we're working on. So that's the second thing is you have to be, uh, think outside the box. Number three, you have to be superiorly patient. Um, I can definitely say that I've had several students who've had special needs who will take a lesson and they're doing great, they're doing great, they're doing great, they're doing great, and then all of a sudden they're like two or three weeks behind. They can't help it. Um, it's really important to understand that. It's not like they did it on purpose. It's not like they didn't work. Um, sometimes for certain disorders, um, you just have memory loss and you lose things. So to be patient, to make sure that you're not frustrated or um, you're not showing that like you're disappointed that they forgot things. There's a difference um, between when somebody doesn't work and they're going backwards and when somebody legitimately can't grasp the concept it's, it's gone. Um, what I tend to notice is, you know, if they just didn't work, there's a lot of eh and ums and excuses that happen. Um, if somebody legitimately has a special need and it causes them to have memory loss from time to time, they will literally look as if they've never heard this before. Um, and the important thing, as I said, is you don't want to make them feel like they did something wrong or make them feel bad. You want to just reinforce what you've already taught them. So you might have to actually do part of your lesson from weeks ago again to remind them. Um, the very last thing that I think is important 
when you're working with people with special needs is to make sure you have fun with them. Um, and what I mean by that is find out what they're interested in besides what you're doing. Like um, one of the students I had who had Down syndrome, she was very interested in movies. So working on songs that were in movies that she liked um, really engaged what she was doing and kind of made it easier for her to understand because she had that connection already with like, I enjoy movies, I enjoy music, this song was in this movie, I can remember this. So looking for those connections, really finding a way to, um, again, have fun, engage, be creative, do things that you wouldn't necessarily normally do with someone who doesn't have a special need. Um, now, my takeaway for this is if once you work with somebody with special needs, first of all, it's an awesome experience. They're amazing people. <laughs> um, but anyways, working with somebody with special needs um, can teach you a lot as a teacher as well. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've used things that I've, um, I've done with people with special needs who can't quite do things the same way as other people to teach people who are, I guess, for lack of a better term, normal. Um, <laughs> it, it just, it, it's amazing. Um, it really does, as a teacher, help you become more creative with how you're helping um, students learn. And it helps, um, you know, your students to know that you're there for them. Um, again, so working with special needs individuals is something that I have done and I do pretty much on a daily basis. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, um, it's a really great thing to do. Make sure that you keep treating them normal. Make sure that you think outside of the box. Uh, be very patient with them and make sure to engage in a fun way, a positive way with them. All right, I hope this helps you. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section and you guys have a great day. Bye.